Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The Vermont Farm Bureau is the state's largest nonprofit trade association of agricultural producers. Its mission is to serve and advance Vermont agriculture. Well, this afternoon we're going to find out more about the Farm Bureau and the 14 Farm Bureau chapters located in each Vermont county. Joining me is Betsy Green. Betsy is a regular contributor to Across the Fence as the UVM Extension Equine Specialist. She's also president of the Chittenden County Farm Bureau. Also with us is the vice president of the Chittenden County Farm Bureau, Hayes Sogoloff. Hayes and his wife own and operate Cedar Spring Farm in Charlotte. Thanks so much for being with us. Great to be here. Let's start off talking a little bit about, um, Hayes, just what you do in your business. We uh, own and operate a, a training stable for Morgan Horses in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. and, um, we used to live in Essex for about 35 years and then got surrounded well, where, you, where you live by mm -hmm. Lang Farm and uh, sold our property and moved to Shalott where there was some open land. Mm -hmm. And so, Betsy, what does the Farm Bureau do? I know well, we mentioned there are 14 chapters, but... Yeah, the Farm Bureau works overall to try and represent and help farmers ma maintain and build their businesses in Vermont. So whether it's a small farm, organic, traditional, or any other type of diversified ag, you know, the old and the new coming in, Vermont Farm Bureau is trying to represent them and help assist them. And so about how many people are in your chapter, or members? Well, in our county we have, I think we have over 300 members. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, and it's just working together. Some of those are supporters of farms, some of those are farmers, mm -hmm. and both are very important. And so who can be a member? Anyone can be a member. <laughs> we have, you know, whether they have an interest in farming or just want to support or do it for their livelihood, anyone can be a member. And so what are some of the issues that the Farm, your, your, um, farm Bureau works on in, in Chittenden County? What are some of the, the big issues? So one of the things that we have actively going on right now is we have H202, a bill in the House for trying to get the agriculture defined under or judged under one definition instead of the many different types of farming definitions that are used sometimes when they're convenient for approving or disapproving and that's been a big issue for us in Chittenden for many of our farm operations. Can you give me an example of that? Well the the current use for example we have there are folks that have applied for current use that are by all definitions should be accepted both buildings and land for agricultural purposes and benefits and that has not been always the case when it goes through the different channels of the application process and that's been an issue for a lot of our farms including Cedar Spring. Mm -hmm. yeah, there was no, no problem getting your land approved for current use uh, but when it came time to get your farm buildings if you weren't considered a typical dairy farmer, uh, the tax department just interpreted it that it, you weren't eligible. Well, that seems kind of crazy. I mean, you're obviously a farm. You've got horses. Well, they were <laughs> hoping not to have just the backyard horse people qualify, and that doesn't happen because we have to go by the same rules that everyone else does. 51% of your income has to be from the farm operation, so that eliminates all hobby farms and hobby horses. And mm -hmm just gets you down to the professionals that are trying to make a living at it. Mm -hmm. And those professionals are keeping land open just as the other farms are too. And they met the requirements. So that was one of our big purposes with the H202. And one of the things that got our, our group our <laughs> together and active. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how we became members. I mean, we were always members in absentia. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but then when we found out that Betsy got involved and she said, well, look, I'm equine related and there may be some issues if you want to come on board here that we, we can work with. And that's when Bonnie and I um, became active in the, in the uh, Chittenden County part of it. And so what about um, other issues that you face? I know that on my notes say workers' compensation has oh, been yeah. a problem. I've, I've been working on that one for <laughs> years. Um, when you have a business, uh, everyone is assigned a certain uh, classification. And it's just very strange that in the horse industry, um, people that work in our barns, just the stable help, the kids that clean the stalls mm -hmm. and get the horses ready, they're under a classification that is, includes race, horse, um, jockeys, 
um, harness racers. Rodeos. R rodeos, really high-end uh, occupations that require, you know, much more. Or high risk. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, we're so much more than uh, firemen, policemen, even regular farmers. We're almost a third or 40% more premium per hundred dollars that you pay. And I looked into this and looked into it and I found that there's a precedent where in um, Maryland and New York, uh, the uh, people who ran the racetracks there found out that they were paying for their stall cleaners the same as they were paying for their jockeys and they came up with a two-tier system. And that's what we were hoping to, to um, promulgate here in, in our state, a two-tier system. And how long have you been working on this issue? <laughs> oh, I, not long enough. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we started just by phone calls to the insurance companies, and they couldn't believe that there was such a discrepancy, and they found out that it was. And but it's such a you just can't get the state department uh, on your side because they don't make those rates. Mm -hmm. It goes up to the national rating, and to do that, you have to make a legislative change and make the two-tier system like they did in Maryland. In New York, is that a lot of what you do is is through the legislature that you have to go through the legislature to make these changes? Yeah, and a lot of times it's a matter of educating the legislature as well to get some of these things started, and it takes time. I mean, certainly takes time, but just the fact that somebody would think, for example, you have some horses, but you're not going to get current use recognition because you're not a business that's not your business right and the people that board their horses at some of these facilities they're in it for recreation but they're not the ones going after current use it's the ones that are actually running the business which is an agriculture business by definition right is it just the fact that some of the laws are uh, targeting dairy farms? I mean, we think the farming, it's, it's a dairy farm? Well, it's, it's interesting because there's not against dairy. It's a matter right. of saying, hey, a dairy farm is different, but so is an organic farm or a diversified ag farm or something like that. And as long as these people are doing what we want current use to support, which is keeping open land and farming and making Vermont, Vermont, there's no reason that these folks shouldn't have equal treatment. We're not asking for special, just equal treatment. It's really an interpretation of the statute that they refer to, and it's an old, old statute. Mm -hmm. And agriculture today is so different. I mean, in Vermont, you're not talking dairy all the time anymore. You've got uh, sheep. Cheese, beef, wine. Cheese, wine. There's so much that encompasses agriculture. Not that they would all qualify for this, but the definitions are just antiquated, That the ones that they have to refer to. And how important is that to your business as far as you being able to stay in business, to be able to it, get the It's huge in our, in our business. I mean, our taxes on our property up there are like $26,000 a year. Mm -hmm. 9000 of that is the barn. And uh, my wife's Social Security goes to her towards that barn payment. Mm -hmm. And now we have uh, 80 open acres there that are tempting for us to try and develop and if we can't meet our tax obligations. Right. But those are in current use as we decided we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as we get a little older, our <laughs> options are much more limited as to what we're gonna do with that property. Is that typical of what you hear? Well, yeah, that and the fact that we've had dairy farms that sold out to horse barns or changed over to horse barns and they got taken out of current use even though they stayed in agriculture and still met those. So that's where there's something wrong with the... Sometimes it's perception. Mm -hmm. Uh, perception versus reality, and the reality is they meet the requirements. Perception is, well, it's just a rich horse barn owner. Well, if you you are into horses, you know they don't make you rich. <laughs> no, they do not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an interesting um, sidebar, though. So part of going about this is just educating lawmakers and trying to, to just keep chipping away at that, and, and it, as you said, it does take time. Yeah, and also letting them know what the people contribute to those situations, you know, to Vermont and to all the youth that are involved in horses. They are in an agricultural business. They're staying out of trouble because they're learning work ethic, this and that, mm -hmm. and they're being paid a high <laughs> price for workers' comp, too. <laughs> so. Tell me a little bit, I know we've talked about this before, Betsy, but just so that our viewers can be reminded, um, 
what the horse industry does contribute to the economy? Well, way back ten, over ten years ago when I did the horse industry survey, we had just calculating the minimum of grain and hay and horses were contributing over eighteen million dollars just in the feed and hay alone. And then when you think about all those people that support the secondary or indirect industries from horse farriers to vets to chiropractors mm -hmm. to feed stores, trucks and trailers. Hayes can talk to you about money put into trucks and trailers and <laughs> yeah, shavings, shavings. <laughs> <laughs> and all of that. So it just really contributes a lot to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Now the Chittenden County Farm Bureau was recognized at the annual state meeting for outstanding work. Tell us about some of the things that you've uh, been working <laughs> on and were recognized for. Yeah, well we have all kinds of things that we have going on. One of them that's coming up in July and August, the learning barns. They're miniature barns that contain books that are agriculture related from chickens to horses to everything from you know preschool through grade school and we have one at Shelburne Farms that's in permanent residence mm -hmm. there and used quite a bit by those campers and everyone else. And then we have another one that is at Somervale. It's at, at the Intervale right now. Mm -hmm. It'll be highlighted during the Thursday evening Somervale events through July and August. And that's something that's really neat. Louise Waterman has been a key in kind of re refurbishing and getting those back up and active. Excellent. And then there's also the um, Horse Farm of Distinction Award. Oh, yes. We um, noticed how the uh, Agriculture Department, I believe, uh, promulgated the um, Dairy Farm of Distinction, and we've seen signs across the state, and we thought, well, maybe we could get some horse people to um, enter a program like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, wouldn't, it would be one that took all aspects of their programs, whether it was how the barns looked, how they, how they helped the communities, uh, what they gave back to the communities by public service. Um, we had a bunch of different little uh, forms that, that they could look at and just see if they qualified for mm -hmm. I know you have a sign that you wanted to show. <laughs> oh, yes. This is a, a, a typical sign <laughs> that we had made locally. Nice. And um, Yeah, and so it's basically an application process. The, ver the Farm Bureau, uh, the forms are on the Farm Bureau website. Mm -hmm. And it's something that actually I think we're still taking applications yes. for this yeah. year. And we try and recognize a, a farm a year and it doesn't have to be new and fancy but no. one of the key things for us is it also has to have safety aspects because farm depends on clientele and of, often those clientele are youth right so they have those forms at the feed stores that the horse people excellent go to. Yeah. and so betsy i know we you were here before talking about the psa that was produced and actually it's going to be recognized nationally. Yeah, yeah, it actually is the top national winner in the video um, form section of the communications award at the National Association of County Agricultural Agents. So I'll have a meeting in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and pick, pick up that award that this PSA has won. Well, let's take a look at it again. Sure. With more than 9 million horses in the U.S., it's very likely you'll meet one on the road. Be alert and be cautious. Horses react unpredictably, so look to the rider for guidance, follow arm signals, and keep your cool. Motorists should slow down and pass wide around the horse. Riders stay in single file on the right-hand side of the road. Drivers don't honk the horn or rev the engine. Mutual respect may save a life. Brought to you by the Vermont Horse Council, Vermont Farm Bureau, and University of Vermont Extension. Well, another safety issue that uh, the Farm Bureau has been in, uh, active with is the Rollover Protective Structure Program. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, a lot of people have seen shows on across right. the fence about ROPS or rollover protection for tractors. And Chittenden County thought, what can we do to help farmers and support Farm Bureau and other? And so we actually put out a challenge to all the other county Farm Bureaus and said, we're funding a rollover protection uh, ROPS bar for a farmer in our county, we challenge you. Mm -hmm. And I think we ended up funding several of the roll bars from that and it was really good combination of safety that directly affected and helped farmers in our counties a, and states. That's a huge issue for you as well. Oh yeah, I mean, I've got tractors that are 30 years old, they came with roll bars, but other farmers have tractors 40, 50 years old that do not. Mm -hmm. And they are barely on, on side hills, can be very unstable. Yep. 
Exactly, very dangerous. Well, before we go, I want to pass along the website for the Farm Bureau, which has links and information about all of the 14 county Farm Bureaus in Vermont. Go to vtfb.org. That's vtfb.org. You might even want to join. Yeah, <laughs> come join us. Yeah. Thanks so much for being with us today. Our pleasure. Yeah. That's our program for today. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.